Joining me today is Kurt Kudrin with the Dakota County Soil and Water Conservation District. Kurt, why don't you tell us a little bit about rain gardens? Sure. Well, rain gardens are basically depressed areas in the landscape that uh, allow water to soak in. So they generally take water runoff uh, from rooftops, from driveways, from streets, and they, they allow it to soak into the ground in a, in a garden area. Uh, and in the landscape, they look like a, a traditional garden. Um, so there's perennial plants, um, and maintenance is, is pretty similar to a, uh, a regular garden bed. So we're here now in the spring. Uh, what, what does the homeowner need to do to maintain this? Well, this is, uh, like you said, this is early spring. So we're mid-March right now. We've had some warm weather. Uh, things are just starting to green up, so we want to make sure that it's ready for the year. Uh, so one of the first things you can do, um, if some of the vegetation still has seed in it, uh, if you want to collect some of those uh, native wildflower seeds, you can. Uh, this is butterfly milkweed. And you can collect seeds, you can grow those in pots, uh, you can get more plants uh, ready for next year. Great. Um, after you've collected any seed that you want, uh, the next thing to do is basically cut back that vegetation. Uh, so you can cut it down pretty much to the ground, uh, at least with uh, the grasses and the wildflowers. Uh, if you do have any shrubs or trees, obviously you don't want to be cutting those back to the ground. Uh, you can do some minor pruning, but uh, no major cutting on those. So then do we want to take all the dead vegetation? We don't want to throw it in the garbage, right? What should they do with the dead vegetation? Yep, so the vegetation can go in your uh, yard waste bin or into a compost pile. Okay, uh, that'll work out. So then um, after that's gone, and I see there's quite a few leaves here, is that the next thing they want to kind of do is remove maybe some of that or? Yep, so the next thing would be to remove some of those weeds um, and that'll get, get you down to your mulch layer. Uh, so there's shredded hardwood mulch on this, on the entire planting area. And so when you start pulling that, that back, you'll start seeing some of the plants uh, that are in here. Here's some prairie smoke that's starting to green up. Um, you'll also find some of, the, some of the weeds and some of the grasses that are starting to encroach. Uh, here we've got a little bit of, of turf grass that's starting to creep over the edging. Uh, so now is a good time to clean up some of that edging. Uh, it's really easy to, to get that nice clean edge. Uh, it'll save a little bit of work later on in the summer. So then do they need to add more mulch or is there kind of a rule of thumb on if they need to add or not add? Yep, so if, if you're getting bare areas where you can see, see uh, fresh dirt, then it's a good time to start adding mulch. And we use a shredded hardwood mulch. Uh, it's a nice fibrous strand so it clings together. So if you have water in the rain garden, it doesn't float and uh, doesn't float away like wood chips or bark wood. Okay. Is there anything else as far as maintenance goes that you need to look for? Really the only thing that's different from a perennial garden would be looking for erosion. Since we do have water coming in, um, we, it usually comes in through a waterway or through a, a downspout. We just want to make sure that it's not eroding any of the soil, any of the soil or causing issues there. So in this case we look here where the dry creek bed comes in. And in this case we don't have any major erosion issues. Uh, it's not scouring out so we're good to go. Great. Now I think Maybe we should come back here later in the year and see how it's doing? Sure, yeah, we'll stop back in a couple months and uh, see, see how the plants are doing and uh, see if there's any other things we need to do. All right, thanks.